Standing Chimney's last open day of 2023 is this Saturday, December 2nd, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Be sure to stop by to stock up on pierogies, fresh baked goods, home decor, jewelry, gift items, anything you can think of. For more information, go to facebook.com slash standing chimney. Today's recipe can be found on our website, bit.ly slash Mary Mac French Toast Casserole. Hello and welcome to In the Kitchen with Mary Mac. Today we're going to be giving you our recipe for French Toast Casserole. It's interesting we're recording this on the actual holiday, National French Toast Day. It will not go out on that national holiday because Poor we're planning. recording it in the <laughs> evening. <laughs> Poor planning. But this is quite possibly one of the most fabulous fake holidays I've ever heard of. I didn't even know there was one. I was contacted about being on Talk Pittsburgh because... National French Toast Day was coming up, and they asked me if I would come on and do my French Toast casserole, which I did, and you can watch that on our YouTube channel, too. It's not on our YouTube channel. Oh, never mind. Well, it's, it's on my Facebook page. It's on your Facebook page. It's on uh, Talk Pittsburgh's website. It is linked to on our blog post for French Toast Casserole, which I gave the URL for at the top. Just go to our website. You can find it. Okay, well, it's in all those places. See how well I know what's going on. Not at all. So anywho, I hadn't really, I mean, I make this every year at Christmas time. This is a part of our Christmas brunch, which the original podcast for this recipe was episode 29 of In the Kitchen with Mary Mac from our first year. It was included in a podcast called, what was it? Holiday Brunch? I, think. I believe it was Holiday Brunch. Yeah. yeah. There's actually several recipes on that one. And so we thought since we did all this other French toast related activity this week, <laughs> we would just put it in its own podcast and give it the place it deserves in the history of our podcast. So here it is. It's just going to have its own little show. This is a good recipe. It's pretty simple, pretty much pantry staples. You know, it comes together easy and it, it will make your life easier. I'm telling you. We have had this for Christmas brunch for probably, I want to say, about hmm, 20 to 25 years, probably. The first time we ever had this, we were visiting relatives in North Carolina. We were on our way to Florida. We stopped to stay overnight at my husband's cousins, Bill and Vicky, and Vicky made this delicious French toast casserole for breakfast, and my kids loved it because we were all immediately addicted to it. Well, you know, sometimes when you when you go somewhere, or when you know when you visit family or whatever, um, well, usually not. We don't usually have this trouble in our family per se, but sometimes when you visit somebody and they make something and they swear that kids love it because their kids love it, and my kids would be like, "I'm not eating that ever." in my life. So I was very nervous about going to stay at this family member's house because I, you know, I didn't want to say my kids don't eat blah, blah, blah. So then, you know, of course we threatened them in the car. You know, I don't care what they put out there. You're going to eat it. You're not saying anything. I don't want to hear anybody say anything. Got it. And they, they are the best people. They had the best food. It was like, you know, none of the foods were touching, you know, like <laughs> it was just so nice. We had such a nice visit. And um, and I got this French toast casserole recipe out of it. So well, like I said, we've been making it for years. Vicky is an excellent cook. This is just one of the many, many. She's got like so many great recipes in her collection. The nice thing about this particular recipe is you can really make it your own. It's such a good basic recipe. You can add things to it. You could put berries or something like that in it or raisins or you could use different breads in it whole grain bread, or I've used oatmeal bread in it before, um, that sort of thing. Uh, you could use different milk in it. You could leave the cinnamon out or, you know, it's just such an easy recipe to play with. So another thing with this is there's no sugar in the actual casserole itself. There's no sugar in it. The sugar is sprinkled on top. So if you, if you don't want the sugar, you don't have to put it on. You know what I mean? It's just, it's like I said, it's a really good, simple recipe to make your own. 
Here we go. You will need a 9 by 13 baking dish greased well. I usually use a glass one, but I actually just did one in a metal nonstick pan and it worked really well. So you could go either way, whichever, you know, use what you have. 10 cups of cubed day old bread, any type you like. And this is about one bakery sized loaf of bread, like a daily loaf from a nine by five bread pan or a little bit more. You can put a, you can probably go up to like 12 to 13 cups of cubed bread, you know, if you wanted to really make it bountiful, but <laughs> okay. And you'll need eight eggs beaten well. I usually use extra large eggs, but you can use large eggs also if you want, you know, um, eight eggs beaten well. Two cups of milk, and like I said, whatever type of milk that you like to use, use that. I usually use whole milk, but you can use whatever you like. Two teaspoons of vanilla extract and one teaspoon of cinnamon. You want to beat your eggs really well, add your milk in, beat that in, add your vanilla and your cinnamon. When you do this, you can either put the bread cubes in the baking dish and pour the mixture over them, or what I do anymore is I just pour the mixture over the cubed bread in the bowl that I cubed the bread into. So if you have a nice big mixing bowl, do that because then you can take a large spoon and kind of toss that mixture around so that it coats the cubes better and then put it into your baking dish. Either way it works. I've done both ways. Pouring it over into the baking dish is probably a little bit more convenient and less messy. But whatever you want to do is fine. I just have been doing it in the bowl. I don't know. I got the idea and I started doing it that way. You know what I mean? So it's just one of those, you know. So either way, get that mixed in there and then cover your baking dish with plastic wrap and put it into the refrigerator overnight. This can be in the refrigerator for 24 hours if it needs to be. It's like one of those things. It can either be the first thing you mix up in the day or the last thing you mix up in the day and just put it in the refrigerator and then you're going to leave that overnight and that allows the bread to just become uniformly soaked with the egg mixture and and it does it really it'll soak in and go all through it so it works really well now you're going to mix up a topping and you can do this the night before and put it in a little container uh two tablespoons of sugar and you can use any type of sugar you like white sugar, raw sugar, maple sugar, whatever, and a half teaspoon of cinnamon. Mix that up, and that's what's going to go on top of your casserole before you bake it. So when you get it out in the morning, take the plastic rack off of it, preheat your oven to 350 degrees, and then sprinkle your sugar mixture over the top. Go ahead and sprinkle that on, put it into the oven, and you're going to bake that for 50 to 60 minutes because it's been in the refrigerator. It's very cold and it has to like warm up before it starts baking. So it takes longer than you would think. So what I usually do is like we have a brunch on Christmas morning and I will put this in about an hour before I think we're going to be eating. And it works out perfectly because you can even shut the oven off and leave it sit in the warm oven or bring it out. It's not going to cool off that fast. When you get it out of the oven, you can either cut this into squares, like just like how you would cut a cake, or you can cut it into smaller pieces, you know, so that if you have more people, you can cut it into smaller serving size pieces, however you want to do. I usually get about 12 for our family squares out of this. I say on the recipe, you can cut it into like 15, or I usually cut it into 15 or 16 squares. But I realized tonight when we had it for supper that I think I cut it into bigger squares than that. I mean, you have to be realistic <laughs> That's here. True. We love French toast and we love French toast casserole. And honestly, like I could eat half a nine by 13 by myself. <laughs> this is true. This is this is most likely true. So you can serve this with maple syrup. You can make fresh fruit, say like strawberries, crushed strawberries with a little sugar in them to put on it or blueberries, or any type of fruit syrup, jam, powdered sugar, honey, whipped cream, whatever. 
this is a great thing to have if you want to have a toppings bar for your holiday brunch. You know, you can get all different kinds of toppings and let people choose what they want. And that would be a great idea. We've done it minimally, like I said, with blueberries, strawberries, whipped cream, powdered sugar, you know, just a little bit of stuff. So this is such a good recipe to use for the holidays because I love that you can fix it the day before and put it in the refrigerator and, you know, and it's out of sight, out of mind. And it doesn't take very long to prepare, honestly, maybe like a half an hour total because of cutting the bread up. And also, if you have kids and they want to help you, you can just take your bread, slice it and let them break it into pieces and put it in the bowl and help you out there, which is a lot of fun. I love to do that with kids. So I think that's a great idea to do too. This is just, to me, this is like a nice kind of a life hack recipe, you know, just simplify, simplify a little bit. And then you can have whatever, you know, if you want to have sausage or bacon or whatever on the side with this, it just makes a nice dish to serve for your brunch. Now, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Because I know for our holidays, since there's so many of us, sometimes you make like a couple trays of this. Is this something where you can like par bake and freeze it in like a foil pan if you want to make it farther in advance? Yes, you can do that if you're going to, if you want to do that. What you want to do is go ahead and mix it up, make it, and bake it for 30 minutes. Okay. Take it out of the oven, let it cool completely, put plastic wrap over it, and then put it, I would say, if you can put it in a large size Ziploc bag, like if you have a a two-gallon Ziploc bag and your pan will slide into it, you could do that. Or if you have a pan with a lid that snaps on, even better, and put it in that and put it in the freezer. You could probably do that up to a month ahead of time, and it would work fine. And then just finish baking, like, thaw it in the refrigerator and then put it in for 30 minutes? Right. Take it out, thaw it, and then put it into the oven and bake it. It's one of those things, if it's cold, it's going to take a little bit longer, but probably 30 to 40 minutes and bake it and it would be fine. I did one. I I par-baked it, cooled it, and put it in the refrigerator, and then I took it out and baked it, and it was perfect. And I've actually frozen it. I've actually made it complete and frozen it. And then brought it out, thawed it, and baked it, you know, just baked it enough to heat it up, and it was really good too. So that's a good idea because if you want to, if you need to have something really ready ahead of time, that's a fine thing to do too. I love having things ready ahead of time, it makes life so simple. It's, it's just something that's so good, especially like I said, if you use different breads. I make an oatmeal wheat germ bread, makes fantastic French toast. I've used In this casserole, I've used baguettes and just sliced it into slices and then cut those into quarters, you know, and made it with baguettes. It's very good. French toast is just such a classically delicious thing that you can do so much with. It can be the main course of your meal. It can be a dessert by putting fresh fruit and whipped cream on it. It, It's just so, it's very versatile. You can make French toast. I We've done this a lot. This was a trick that my friend's mother did when we were kids. Make up the French toast and cool it on cooling racks and then freeze it and then just take it out and put it in the toaster. You know, you just pop it in like a piece of toast and heat it up and it's fantastic. Well, I hope you give this a try. I hope you enjoy it as much as we do. This is my Merry Christmas gift to you. Make sure to check us out online on Facebook and threads at Mary Mac Bakehouse on Instagram at Mary Mac Bakehouse and Mary Mac Podcast, and on our website, MaryMacPodcast.com. Thanks a lot for listening if you did, and if you didn't, too bad for you.